Hey guys, Kent here from Think Trade Profit. In this video, I'm going to go over each of the stop orders available to you. By the end of this video, you'll be an expert in all the stop orders and you'll know when best to use them depending on your goals. So uh, in the beginning, I am going to show you the general trade ticket if you, any of you guys use that. We will jump to trade armor, trade armor near the end of this video to look at some of the stop orders that are placed there as well. But let me get you started with this. Um, but most of the time we'll just go over to direct to trade. That's really what you should be using. I think this is the best way to place orders in Fidelity Active Trader Pro. So um, let's open up the general trade ticket. And I'm going to buy a share of Charles Schwab right now at the market. All right, so there's the order and we got a share of Charles Schwab and I'm long up here, you can see it. All right, so. The most popular stop order probably for those of you who generally go long, meaning you buy stock and you want protection, is a sell stop order. So the idea behind a sell stop order is you want to protect yourself from a decline in price. So if my Charles Schwab goes down in price, at some point there's going to be a limit where I want to get out. So that's what a sell stop order is used for. So in the general trade ticket it would look something like this. Put in the symbol, we're going to change that to one share, that's all we have. And the action is going to be sell and then stop. This is the first one we'll look at it. This is the most popular, and this is what I recommend to new people. This is a sell stop market order. There's nothing after this order type, it just says stop. That means that when you put in your stop trigger price and the market trades at that price, this order will trigger, trigger a market order to sell your position. So this is a stop market. Every stop order has a stop trigger price. So say that to yourself first. The stop price is the trigger price. Because it gets more complicated with some of the other orders. You can do some fancy stuff. So the stop price is the trigger price. It's not necessarily where you'll get filled. So again, this is a stop market order. This is the, the first most popular type. This says if this if Schwab goes to 30, uh, I'm sorry, if Schwab goes to 34. Today, I've just got it for a day order. So give me out if the stop drops to 34. Right now you can see it's trading 34 and 37 cents. So sell, stop me out. At this trigger price, it sends a market order to get you out. So it doesn't necessarily mean you get 34, hopefully to be close, but it's a market order. Give me out once it trades at this price. It has nothing to do with the bids or offers in the level two, it's the print. If this trades at 34 or below, it sends a market order to get you out. Easy enough? So we can place that out there. And all these can be managed from the orders window. And I'll show you later, they can all be managed from uh, Trade Armor as well. And you can cancel and replace, and you can do things and move them around. You can change them to market orders. So I have protection on in this order, but let's say a few minutes from now, uh, I change my mind and I want to uh, get out of the market. Maybe I'm up in profit or something like that. Uh, you can do that too. So they can all be managed from here. Right now it's open. So I'm going to cancel that order. All right. The next order type, let's get out of this Schwab real quick and we'll go short. Uh, let's do. All right, so I sold my Schwab. Now I'm going to go short Schwab. So we're going to put on a buy to cover stop. This is probably the second most popular. So we're going to go short share at market. That looks right. All right, so here's the fill. This should update up here in a second. All right, so now I'm short a share of Schwab. So in this case, I want protection on my short. So when you're short, you profit when the price declines. Obviously, the protection is going to be in the upside. So if the stock goes up against me, I want to get out at some price. And that will be your buy to cover stop order. So it looks something like this. Buy to cover, one share. Stop order, again, this is a stop market order. The trigger price, I'm gonna say is 36. If this goes 36, more than a point from here, just get me out. And you can send that out and that can be handled here. So stop order above the market because that's where you're losing money. 
and you can see it here and now it's open for the day any of these stop orders just like other orders you can put them in good till cancel the only thing about that is well there's some some interesting risk in there right if if the market opens up if there's a gap in the market from one day to the next the market could open up below your stop price and you're going to get executed at the market when the market opens there is a way to avoid that but it's a little bit riskier too so now we're going to look at stop limits so let's cancel this uh, buy to cover stop So I'm still short a share of swab. Let's say I want some protection on the upside, but I'm gonna use a stop limit order. This is, again, I don't recommend these for new people, but you need to understand the nuances. So, again, we're gonna do Schwab. We're gonna do buy to cover, one share. So now this is a stop limit order. So remember, there's two configurations here. The stop price is the trigger price. Like I said before, the first order was a stop market order. This one is a stop limit. So now you can choose a trigger price. We'll choose the same trigger price. If it goes to 36, I want to get out. But now you can say, instead of sending a market order out to the marketplace, you can send a limit order. So again, those are risky. There's no guarantee that your stop price gets triggered and you get out at 36 as well so these don't have to be the same so this gives you a little more interesting uh, leeway you could put oh I'll get out at 35 and a half I think that when it when it goes to 36 it's actually gonna come back down a little bit and I'll save some money by getting out lower so this buy to cover stop limit order the market has to go to 36 to trigger it then the 3550 limit order to cover your position is sent to the marketplace and then you wait for that so again, a little bit more complicated, a little bit more risky, but that's a stop limit order from the short side. Let's look at it from the long side. So let's assume I'm long uh, a share and then we're gonna go down. We're gonna use a sell order and stop limit on this side. So again, you've got a trigger price first. If it goes down to say 33, I wanna get out but now you can choose what limit order to send to the market at that time. So this is the trigger that sends the limit order to the market. So a little bit different than the last ones. The stop markets are just, it hits that trade price and it gets you out. These, you can do different things. You can keep them at the same price and hope that you get 33, and you might unless the market's really ripping fast, but this is the one I don't recommend, especially if you're gonna use good till cancel over a long period of time. The market could gap down through your price so let's say Schwab opens down five points tomorrow and it's trading at $28 and you had a stop 33 and a, a stop limit order at 33 and 33. You're not going to get filled and you're not going to get stopped out. And this doesn't even get triggered because it didn't trade at that price. It traded, it opened up lower the next day through that price. So one thing to note, stop orders are only um, monitored for execution between 9.30 and 4 p.m. with Fidelity. So 9.30 to 4 p.m., the regular market hours are when your stop orders are monitored for execution. So the market could gap through this completely and you would not get stopped out. So you don't have real protection here. So those are stop limit orders. Let me cover this Schwab real quick. All right, so I'm gonna jump to the directed trade window now. I like this better, and we'll come back to trade armor in a few minutes. But let's come down here and we're gonna place the orders down this way, just so you can see more of what's going on. So hypothetically, let's say we're long a share of Charles Schwab and you wanted to set a trailing stop order. So if you're long, you're worried about it dropping, you want protection from the downside. So you're gonna set a sell, trailing stop. There's a lot of choices here. So these have a lot more um, configuration and choices. You can do a dollar amount or you can do a percentage. So I'll explain how both of those work. So if you're gonna do a trailing stop with a dollar amount, it would be a dollar away from uh, whatever price when you submit this order. So let's say we were long, eh, let's, we should probably buy a share just so this makes more sense. Let's go ahead and buy another share back real quick. Because I don't think I'll be able to uh, place the stop order. All right, so now we're long Schwab at 3446. So now we're gonna use a trailing stop. For the first example, I'm gonna do trailing stop dollar amount. I'm gonna do one share, that's what we have. And I'm gonna say 
two dollars. You can use fractions in here. You can only use two decimal places, but you can do two dot two five or what have you. And route is auto. Time and force, we'll just do day, but that can be good to cancel as well. So here's how trailing stops work. They never go down. So once I submit this, wherever it's trading at the market, like right now, 34.46, let's do this. So we're doing uh, $2 down. All right, so you can see this little window here and it says trailing stop loss at 32.47. I pick two dollars down that's where the market was trading and that's where it is right now and this will update if the price changes so trailing stops only go up with price so right now this will never have a trailing stop below 32.47 it never moves down it goes in right when you enter the order if if your stock goes up and up and up it will trail two dollars behind that but then if it draws back it will not go down so this protects you from declines in price. It allows you to make more profits, but then if it declines $2 from any point in time, it's gonna get you out. That's a trailing stop, and that's a dollar-based trailing stop. So let's do a cancel and replace. And let's change it to a percentage. So there's also trailing stop percentage. So trailing stop percentage can be between one and 30%, and I think it has to be round numbers. Um, and these are based on last trade. So in this case, we're gonna put 10%. So now we're gonna have a 10% trailing stop loss. So by my math, this is probably gonna be somewhere around um, $3.40 below. Let's find out. So we'll send this out. Right now the stock's trading at $34.48. So we're gonna trail 10% of the stock price below. And if we hover over this, uh, it's about right. It, the trailing stop, it's indicated here on in this little window. You can see it, it's 31.05. So about, yeah, about uh, $3.44 below. So now I have a trailing stop there. And, you, and again, you can manage these from your orders window. You can also um, manage these from Trade Armor. So that's trailing stop dollar and trailing stop percentage. Again, only during reg regular market hours. Let's look at the short side real quick. So I'm gonna sell this Schwab that I have. Oh, I have an open order, so it won't let me sell it without taking that out. So let me cancel the trailing stop order and sell that. All right, and let's go short Schwab. Uh, let's just use the keys. All right, so now I'm short a, sh a share of Charles Schwab. So let's uh, just visualize from the short side. Let's use a trailing stop from the short side. So again, it's gonna be a buy to cover. That's the opposite of being short. We're gonna do a trailing stop and we're gonna do a dollar amount of $2 for one share for the day. So what does this do for you? I'm short at 34.53 and a half. If it goes up $2, I uh, from this price. Once I submit this, it'll be a trailing stop. And if the stock goes down, this trailing stop will move down with me. But on the short side, it will never move back up. It's always going to get you out if there's ever a increase of $2 in price from wherever you're at. So it kind of follows you and helps you lock in profits. But if it ever dips $2, you're going to get out. So uh, let's send this out. So buy to cover, trailing stop $2. And then we'll take a look. Oops, we'll take a look and see where it gives us. Okay, so there's a two dollar trailing stop on a short side position, and the price is thirty six fifty four. So that will um, it'll never go up. It'll only come in our favor if price moves in our favor, but it'll always stay two dollars away. If price turns around and reverses, it doesn't move the trailing stop back up. Trailing stops only move in one direction as you get more profit. Does that make sense? All right, so let's cancel this and let's go into the last two types of orders. So the last two types of orders are pretty interesting. And these allow you to, the, the time I think that you wanna use them is either to catch a breakout or a breakdown or an increase in price. So you do some analysis and you decide that if Charles Schwab goes above 35, you wanna buy it. But you could place this order to wait for price to rise up 
and hit 35 and then you'll buy a market order so you're and you can set this it'll take care of you uh, even if you're away from the computer if this goes up to 35 it'll buy you some stock so this is a buy stop so it's not buy to cover it has nothing to do with the short position this is a buy stop again the stop price is the trigger price so buy stop the trigger price we set is 35 if it goes to 35 I want you to buy me a share at the market today so the stop price is the trigger this buys it at the market that doesn't necessarily mean you get 35 but hopefully you do but this is where you can set up something that maybe you don't want to watch a stock maybe you've got a lot going on you set this up and say hey i looked at my you know analysis i checked out my charts i think schwab's going to break out if it goes above 35. so this is what would do that for you so you can put this out right this out there right now it's not going to buy any stock so Obviously the price is below 35 right now. It doesn't buy anything. It waits till it trades at 35 and then it buys the stock. Same thing from the short side. What if you thought Schwab was going to break down? So we believe that this starts tanking and goes down and it goes trades down at 34. This will get you short. So you'd be able to capitalize on the breakdown without having to watch it. So sell short, stop 34. And you can see that's open as well. Right? It's not selling anything now. It's waiting for the stock to trade down to 34. Then it will short it for you. So those are two powerful strategies that you can use uh, stop orders for. You don't have to babysit them and watch them. Um, and you can plan for a breakout. You know, you can draw some lines on your charts, some support and resistance, something like that. And uh, you can make some decisions and throw them out there and you don't even have to watch them. So those are the main types of stop orders. You've got stop which are stop markets, then you've got stop limits, so they trigger and they send a limit order, and you've got buy stops and sell short stops, which allow you to uh, buy a rising stock or short a declining stock after it hits a certain price. And those are really it. You've seen the trailing stops and how that works, the percentage and the dollar amounts. Again, those only move in your favor. All right, one other thing I wanna uh, share with you that I found out from Fidelity, because even I was a little kind of gray in this area, with stop market orders, the ones that aren't limits, I was curious because they say, hey, you set your stop price, that's the trigger, and then a market order is sent uh, out to get you out of your position. I, I actually emailed them through the Secure Message Center and I said, hey, how do you handle stop, stop loss and stop limit orders? Do you do the stop market ones? Do you hold them in the house until they're triggered and then send a market out for us? Or do you place them out with the market center, either the NASDAQ market maker or the, the um, the specialist on the New York Stock Exchange, and I got an answer. So this is what they sent me. All right, so here's my questions down here. It says, with stock trades, do you keep stop loss and stop limit orders in-house with Fidelity until the stop price transaction hits the tape and then send out a market or limit order? Or are the stop loss and the stop limit orders routed to the appropriate market center and they manage them, not Fidelity, when the trades are placed? So I was asking, do they sit in Fidelity, does Fidelity monitor them and then send them out, or do they place them out with somebody else? Because um, people question, hey, oh, my broker um, you know, is hunting my stops and that kind of thing. Fidelity isn't hunting your stops. It's the people, the market centers that they send them out to. So the answer uh, from this representative was, um, once the stop loss and stop limit orders are placed, Fidelity routes them to the appropriate market centers. So they, as soon as we place them, they send them out and uh, and they're with the market makers or the specialists so those are the guys that are running your stops it's not fidelity um, fidelity sends them out as soon as you create them so that's something to keep in mind too Alrighty. and last but not least i wanted to uh, just take a peek at trade armor and see how it relates to managing stop orders so uh, we're going to jump into trade armor i still have a sell short stop order here at 34. If schwab drops down, drops down to 34 i'm going to get short so if we go to Trade Armor and pop this open and link this with orange and that should pull up Schwab as my other things. So I don't have a position so it doesn't uh, reflect anything in positions but you can see my stop order here. So this can be adjusted here and all the stops can be too. So it can be managed here or in Trade Armor if you like. It's visual and you can move it around. So we can move this even lower. Oh, I don't think 34 is a good price. Let's move it down to 33 flat and hit replace. And now I canceled the other one and now we moved it down to 33. 
So it's all intertwined. If you want to use Trade Armory, you can. Uh, one thing to not forget is in Trade Armor, you've got the bracket, buy to cover bracket orders, and the sell brackets. So these are in the Trade Armor video, but these have stop orders in them to protect you, right? A buy to cover bracket has a stop, that is the trigger price. Uh, so buy to cover this first to cover short, there's a stop order. This place is a stop order and a profit target for you. Same thing on the um, buy triggers bracket. So this would be go buy me the stock and market put in a stop order for me at this price and put a profit target here at this price. So check out the Trade Armor video for that, but again, stops can be placed in here too. So maybe you wanna put everything in, uh, if you're not really super fast scalping the market and that kind of thing, you're gonna get your stop order and a profit target and you can set it all up and then you can manage it from wherever you want. Trade Armor, orders window, what have you. So that's pretty much it. It's all kind of interrelated. There's a lot of ways to put stops out there. And now you know every type of stop order. You've got a stop market, a stop limit, the trailing stops and the two ways you can do them with dollars and percentages. And you've got sell short stop market and buy stop market. So if you want to uh, kind of catch a breakdown in a stock, you would choose the sell short stop market and maybe a breakout or a stock that's rising up and you want to buy it after it hits a certain price, that would be the buy stop market. So that is it. You are now an expert in all the stop orders. You can always replay the video and play it at slow speed. I know I talked really fast, but I didn't want to keep you guys tied up for very long. There's a lot of versatility there, a lot of strategies you can accommodate with the different stop orders. So use them. Use them to protect your profits and use them to catch those breakouts so you don't have to sit and watch the stock at every moment. If you know you want to buy it above such and such price, put your buy stop market out there and just let it take care of you. All right, guys, I hope this is helpful. I hope this cleared up some questions. It is confusing. Uh, just remember, your stop trigger, your stop price is a trigger price, and other conditions follow after that. So with that, good luck out there. Protect your profits as always, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much.